some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and today I'm doing a discussion over the solo variant of Senjutsu, uh, which is a game that actually, surprisingly, has a lot of solo content. Um, being a skirmish-style game, I wouldn't expect it to be included, but there are two campaign books specifically for the solo variant. Um, now, one, this one seems to be, like, the bigger of the two, uh, but there are two different, like, narratives that really, uh, like, go go pretty hard. Like, they have this... Uh, I, I really like the artwork. Like, it's a comic book style uh, campaign. This one following the Ronin. And this one following... I haven't done this one, but it seems to be following... Uh, it says character signature deck. Um, but... I don't know. I don't know what this one is for. Maybe it's just more of, like, your character. Oh, the Shadow Under Steel. That's a expansion. Anyway, it is fantastic artwork. And how does a game like Senjutsu, which is a game where you have your own customizable deck, or precon, um, squaring off against, in my opinion, what is meant to be a 1v1, but you can do multi multiplayer, uh, and the the campaign, the solo campaign, does have you fight off against uh, multiple opponents. How does it actually handle that? And surprisingly, not bad. Like it's it, it it's serviceable. I think you still actually get the feeling of trying to read your opponent. Because um, to me, Senjutsu is kind of a game of understanding what your opponent is using, what kind of weapon it has, what it's going to prefer to do and knowing what options are in its deck uh, and how you're going to try and counter that. Reading your opponent, looking at the cards you have in your hand, but realizing that you don't have any defense cards, and it's like, well, are they going to defend? Can I potentially move out of, out of position? Can I force them to move out of position? Can I get them in a way that uh, is beneficial to me and detrimental to them? And the solo variant does that relatively well, albeit in a more simplistic form. So it has kind of a facing movement procedure um, where, like, let's take the first um, scenario, for example. You face off against a, a guy with a katana and a dude with a spear, and they have kind of a facing on whether they want to be on your left side or right side or your front uh, based off the deck. And the campaign will specifically dictate what their cards are. So wanting to be uh, informative, you could just look at those cards, uh, there's five of them, and read and see, okay, the, it has two attack cards, has one defense, and has two change stance cards. So I know in its discard pile it's done one of its attacks and one of its defenses. Maybe I could bleed it so that maybe its next attack is the card that's getting faced down. So you're thinking of all that while also still having to manage you know, the AI, because they're going to want to advance on you, they're going to want to flank you, they're going to block at inopportune times. Um, so you're trying to deal wounds to them before they can deal wounds to you, and they have a threshold depending on how many there are, so you can still hold five, but they might each only be able to handle three, so you want to cut them down as quickly as you can to make it an even playing field because it's like, oh, haha! -ha, now you both had three health. I killed one of the guys, so now the other guy still only has three health, and he just lost his, his partner. It's very thematic, um, which is a great thing. The solo like scenarios that you do have special rules. Um, like, for example, the very first one has you defending a noble woman, but she has to always be within two spaces of you at all times. And so you kind of have to protect her. She can only get hit once. So if you kind of just focus on one guy and the AI can actually... It can't attack you, but it can attack her. It will kill her, and then you lose. The second scenario has you fighting kind of in an elongated board where a tavern is on fire and they're trying to rush out, but you can try and keep them in there. If you can keep pushing, kicking them back in, they'll start taking wounds from the fire. Uh, the campaign has bosses that have higher, um, oh, a higher wound threshold and rules centered on what they're going about and having their own 
AI deck, like the first one you come across, not in this one, um, is relatively quick. Uh, yeah, Warrior's Revenge, and yeah, you but you also get choices, which is really cool, kind of like in the third one. I guess spoilers, but it's not really that kind of game. Um, you have to defeat the warrior, but option one is you can rush towards the warrior and rob her of momentum, or contemplate your part in the betrayal and await the warrior's frenzied attack, and that's going to tell you how you set your deck up and how the um, opponent is going to set their deck up, which, uh, in this case, it's the exact same. Um, yeah, they have the same exact cards, and... Uh, but they also pull from other characters. So this one, it's like, hey, here's the warrior solo cards, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then just from the solo deck, 9, 21, 22, and 33. And then it has a wound limit of 7. Its preferred behavior is middle, and its stance is offensive, um, which is dictated by whether it's the advantage marker or the commie marker. Uh, and hey, it wants to be in the middle, so it's going to try and move and always position itself to be in your facing, because that's going to be advantage, uh, advantageous to its deck. Which is really cool that they even thought of something like that, because the characters that you play are dictated by the weapons that they're using. So, the Naginata is a spear with a scythe at the end, so you want to kind of keep a slight distance from your opponent. The katana wants to be in up close. Um, and like and flank around. So that's how they kind of play in a condensed version. And I think they did it relatively well. I, I think the best element of the solo variant is its um, kind of campaign book. However, now to be fair, I haven't finished this, so um, not entirely sure how the entire campaign goes, but, um, well, I just lied. Brothers in Arms. I thought this was all for the Roman. So this one is about the, has the student, I think. Yeah, student deck. Okay, neat. Uh, but it is interesting because the other characters, um, like in the expansions, like the ninja or the sailor, they come with solo cards, so I'm not entirely sure how those are integrated into the solo variant. It seems like in the rulebook, uh, you can play like in nightmare mode, they have character specific AI rules. And, but because the solo campaigns are um, like very specific, that you can't really integrate them into the campaign. So, that could just be, hey, here's the campaign book, this is what you follow. Uh, but it sounds like with the, you just, if you want to fight with this deck against the ninja, um, you just have the ninja play out and then have its own five cards. I think it's always five cards. So, I haven't done that. I haven't just played a game. I've only followed, like, the, the campaign book. Um, but, if that's what you can do, if you just pick a character and you just take five cards and you just throw them out there and run through the solo variant, kind of the way the rules work, then that's a really cool way for you to test out decks. That is a brilliant way to test out a deck, I think, because a lot of deck construction games are centered around you constructing your deck and then facing off against someone who has either constructed their own deck or, or whatever, you needing another person. And that can be very... Um, debilitating if you know or demoralizing if you if your deck construction sucked like if you tried an idea that didn't work and you're just getting your ass beat or maybe it's a bad hand or whatever there's a lot of variables that could come into you constructing a deck and being like well it's not really working the way I wanted to why is that but if you were able to just be like okay I've built this heavy aggressive, in-your-face, high-mobility katana deck, and I want to see how that fares off against someone with a bow, with a gun, that has concealment, that uses poison, that uses uh, range, that uses terrain, that hits hard, you know, all these different things. If you're able to just pick one of those and be like, okay, boom, throw it out there and kind of get a feel, still have to think about what they might do versus what you're going to do, uh, based off the cards that you have, 
I think that's a really, really cool element that a lot of skirmish games, deck construction games, do not have. Now, the negatives of the solo variant are that it's still not against another person. Like, they're still random. Like, for example, you're not going to get quite the level of you know, getting into your opponent's head. Like, the game I'm thinking of whenever I'm playing this is Battlecon. When I'm playing Battlecon, it's very much about who I'm playing and who my opponent is playing. And then understanding what both our characters can do, strengths and weaknesses, and then after you get past that level, then it's about what are my opponent's options, because uh, Battlecon is a basically a perfect information game. You know exactly what they can't do, so then you have to look at the field and be like, okay, what is their most optimal decision? And you look, because you have exactly what their cards are. So you can look at it and be like, what would they most likely do? What can they only do? Okay, that's what I think they're going to do. So now how can I counter that? Um, obviously, Battlecon is a lot more tighter in scope because it's not a deck of cards. But this game still has that kind of similar feel, and you don't really get that with the with the solo variant. You you get like the surface level of that, which is not a bad thing. At least it's there. But you're not going to be like, okay, what can my opponent possibly do? What do I have? How can I position myself and deal with that in such a way? You don't really get that because I've had games of this where one of the bots just defended the entire time, like. Uh, because it has a defense card in its uh, in its deck, and that defense card happens to be a change behavior, move, reset deck. And resetting deck is just shuffling. You, oh, okay, that's all. That's back in. So reset the deck. Okay, it's uh, it's going again. Like I'm gonna play this card. Oh, it's defending again. Uh, like change a, a behavior and reset the deck. And, oh, it's only blocking those, and it didn't even succeed. So, And they can counter and stuff, like this one river block, for example, can block. And if, if it blocks at 6 or 5 uh, initiative, then it will counter. Um, but then, oh, okay, initiative 3, change AI behavior, move, rotate, reset deck. Uh, I've had games where one person just blocked the whole time. So it's like he sees us in... I mean, thematically, I guess, if this, like, this inexperienced warrior sees us you know, enraged Ronin that's like, oh, he's going to kill me. I just better, you know, try and block each time. It's kind of like when you're playing Sekiro and you just keep spamming, like, the parry because you're like, oh, my God, I don't know who, like, how to fight this guy. I mean, it's there, but from a gameplay standpoint, it's like, okay, he did nothing this entire time. And a player could easily do that, too. A player could be trying to block to get a parry off um, if they have a lot in their hand or they built that way. They built entirely around defense encounters which would be a really cool deck construction if it's like oh gonna block again yep succeeded counter boom so it's just Ching, hi -ya! <laughs> like the marth move in super smash bros so they they're not like it's not the equivalent of another player is basically what i'm getting at but it's also not just a dumb ai run and your cannon father and they get executed immediately uh which is cool like i still think that this has a lot of legs. I would like to see more with the campaign books. I wish they were more customizable. Like, I get it. It's like the Ronin, whatever it's called. What is this? Uh, the Path of the Ronin. I get it. You're playing a Ronin, um, and your deck is going to be different. You know, it's going to change your deck, which is still nice. I'm glad that they make you try and change your deck up. And they do it in a pretty clean way. Every card has a number on it, so you just have to find the number. Um, but it, uh, it can also just be, it's like, oh man, I wish I could just insert the sailor into this, uh, you know, into this campaign and you can't really, which is unfortunate. So I would have liked it to be a little bit more open or at least have a deck or a campaign book of every single character, which unless I'm totally missing it, winds of change, Kajiro decks, uh, set up. Um, okay, so this is the guy with the dog, I believe. This one is 
I think. Oh, the assassin. Maybe they do have it. Maybe that's what this one is. Yeah, Jimbo. Yo, Jimbo. Um. Dang it. Uh, Yasuke. Oh, okay. Well, I could totally. Oh, that's brutal. Okay, never mind. Maybe that's the ghost in the night. Well, I lied. Never mind. All of uh, this entire The Gathering Storm. Well, never mind. This blue book is uh, is all the uh, is all the expansion characters. This is that's Ronin. Then that's Ronin again. Brothers in Arms. That is the student. Just double checking that. Yeah, okay, so it's Ronin, and then Student. Damn. Yeah, I was hoping that this red one turned out to be all four of the main characters, but it doesn't seem to be. Well, that's a pleasant surprise. I hadn't even looked in the, the blue book, so... Neat! That's there. Um, but yeah, it is it is a pretty solid solo variant that works relatively well. You don't really have to omit a lot of stuff. You don't have to like omit the 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 wounds or stuns that all applies to them um, just as well. Still maneuver around the battlefield, uh, following rules if you're doing the campaign. And it is kind of weird though that they have standees, but the standees actually don't have a facing. Although the standees itself do have a front and a back, which is nice. But I think just from ease of access, like. Your character has an arrow to show facing, even though it's pretty obvious for that. Um, I would much rather have these have be minis, but I guess at the same time, they're they're regular warriors, so they're just kind of just getting there, and you're just like, oh, okay, he runs up, and then I cut him down, so get him out of the way. It's not that big of a deal, but it is kind of weird how they have standees, but miniatures for a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, like. And they also don't really have to worry. They don't worry about Kami. Uh, they don't worry about... Um, they don't worry about uh, focus, which is nice. Like, they don't have to get any of that. It's just face me facing, movement, attacking, blocking, positioning, which is the crux of the game anyway. So, pretty, pretty good. And on a scale of 1 to 10, I think I'm actually going to give the solo variant an 8, which is slightly higher than what I gave it uh, gave the base game like and I think that's because it feels like they put more effort into the solo campaign and that could not be true but the fact that they have specific solo campaign books and not like multiplayer campaign books like there's nothing where it's like oh hey in this campaign play the warrior and the student and then here are the rules for that, uh, depending on which side you are. They don't have that. They put a lot of stuff into the solo campaign, which is cool. That's a really nice element. Um, so, yeah, and that, I mean, that alone gives it a, a slightly higher higher score in the fact that you still get to kind of play and test out your decks. Uh, now now knowing what the blue, uh, blue thing is about, being the... Um, expansion like solo that makes sense on why the those characters come with solo cards which would fit just the one scenario but i still think that that is a little bit too limiting with how many characters there are in the game i i much i'm guessing you don't have to follow the rules like you don't have to do the campaign book you can just take their five cards and just put one of their things on the on the stance board and then just kind of go against them like that. Again, I haven't tried that. Let me know in the comments if if you can do that. It sounds like you can. The biggest negative, though, is I think the rules are really bad for the solo variant. It just kind of has them in the book. And I, well, I will say I do like the fact that they are black background, so you know exactly where the solo rules are in the book. But it just seems like it's just information. Here you go. Here's... That here's ch what chain stance means. Here's what attack means. Oh, by the way, here's here's the actual solo round of rules. It just feels all over the place. That rule book could have definitely been done with a cleaner overhaul. You would essentially get the gist as you're playing, but yeah, it's not super intuitive. But yeah, I'm gonna give Senjutsu an eight. 
Uh, if you would actually like to see me do the solo campaign, let me know in the comments. I'd be more than happy to go through these. Uh, I think it could be super fun. But I have a lot of campaigns going on right now, and I have a solo campaign of my own I'm doing. That it, uh, it's not something I'm just going to in inherently do anytime soon. But if you guys want to see it, and then I can I can make it a priority. But let, So let me know that in the comments. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think of the solo variant in the comments below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching, and I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more of my content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I upload any new content. If you feel like supporting the channel, you can go ahead and click that Patreon link to be taken to my Patreon, and any help is truly appreciated. Other than that, stick around for any, any other run-throughs or reviews or cool top tens or whatever I feel like putting on. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.